Hi, everyone. It's Joey Remini here from seekingbalance.com.au. I've had a question, and this pops up a lot in my community, but it's about visual distortions and eye issues. And so I want to start by just giving everyone a reminder that our balance and capacity to feel stable and centered doesn't only come from the inner ears. So we have our vestibular organs, which allow us to detect accelerations, decelerations, rotations, and make sense of the world. We also have our proprioceptive system, which helps us be aware of where our shoulders and hips are and our arms and our touch system, which allows us to be connected to our own sense of place and occupying space in the world. And that's so important for overall balance and equanimity and even just clear thinking. The proprioceptive system is one of our eight senses. Um, but we have our visual system and our visual system, our eyes, all that visual input is also used to help us make sense of the world and to experience balance. So between those three major systems, the visual system, proprioceptive system, and our vestibular system in the ears, those three systems are actually collecting all the information and using all the complex structures of our brain to organize that information, filter it, and make sense of it. So for some of us, when we're experiencing vestibular issues, um, we may also notice we experience some visual issues. And I know for myself, I, I have quite um, high visual sensitivity. So I have to be really conscious in daily life of how much I'm using screens, whether I've got a brimmed hat and sunglasses in bright lights and certain things that I know if I have too much visual input coming in, there can be like a visual overload and that can lead to visual distortions and visual snow. So I know for me, I have to be really honest and careful and nourishing just towards visual inputs and visual stimulation and overload. So that doesn't make me wrong, doesn't make me sick. It just means I have to know myself and know my limits. Um, and it also means that for me, a lot of really nourishing ways to rest my brain and rest my visual system is through closing my eyes. So a body scan, meditation, taking a rest, laying down or reading an old fashioned paper book as opposed to reading a screen. So there's ways we can work with this. Um, but some, the question was sort of around what tips and tricks do you have and what exercises? And really, it all comes back to the Rocksteady program. So for those of you who have the full Rocksteady program, follow your modules because each module guides you to unpack the layers within yourself as a whole person. So just a reminder, we're not looking at just visual problems. We're not looking at just tinnitus, auditory or vestibular problems. We're not looking at just anxiety or depression. We're looking at a whole person. We want to know everything about this person from the inside out. And that includes your pleasures, your likes, um, things that bring you joy effortlessly. They are what are going to put your brain into a natural flow state with optimal neural firing. And as we access things of enjoyment, joy and pleasure, we'll notice that our visual system, our proprioceptive and our vestibular systems actually function um, with more grace and more coordination. And this is really because we're not stuck in that pressure cooker of external expectation or external judgment or trying to meet external standards or metrics, which has that underlying emotional anxiety, fear, judgment, bubbling up, and all of that occupies resource in the brain. It takes our energy, it distracts our attention, and it really causes less efficient neurological functioning. So while there's nothing wrong with um, exposure to some stress, which is healthy and motivational, we don't want to be living our daily life based upon other people's needs and based upon how other people think we should be or based upon how we think the world needs us to look, to feel, to behave, to talk, to respond, all of that. What the Rocksteady program invites you to do is to have this very gentle awareness of who you really are underneath all of that facade and masking and to learn more about your values, your authentic self, and to really explore this black box of your own pleasure, your own joy, your own enjoyment. Um, so believe it or not, having special interests and having ways to access this part of yourself will help your sensory system to um, 
re-establish its sense of normal and build new templates. So when it comes to visual exercises, what I want to say I would recommend first and foremost, because I don't, I don't know you, you know, you know you, would be go to the things that bring you joy and that just effortlessly, they're like magnets for you. You just want to go and do them or be there. And it 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 just fills you with a sense of lightness and delight. Do those things, go to those places and allow yourself to just be visually cued in. So rather than do um generic prescriptive eye exercises, moving them in this direction, that direction, whatever. We want natural eye movements, natural head positions. We want you bending over. We want you walking. We want you tying up your shoelaces. We want you driving your car. We want you doing all of these natural, normal, intuitive body movements with your eyes open. And then, of course, sometimes with your eyes closed. There are lots of base exercises throughout the Rocksteady program to get you started and to establish um, a sense of exploration that is a combination of eyes open and eyes closed and different head positions, different body positions, different foot positions. So you can get quite technical about it if you want. But my first recommendation would be discover what brings you joy and pleasure and sets you on this natural effortless path of vitality and vibrancy and clear thinking, right? It just takes you into that neurological place of optimal firing. And for some of you, you might be thinking, I have no idea what that is. I, you know, I haven't had a special interest since I was 15 and I've just forgotten all about it. So that could be a bit of a deep dive for you in an exploration. And you can certainly use the Rocksteady program to support you in that. The second thing I would say is start to get really honest and clear about the the type of pressure cooker situations you're in throughout the day. And honestly, for some people, that can be when they wake up, they wake up in dread and they have pressure about how they dress themselves, how they look, how they smell, all of it. And then they get to work or they're doing what they're doing with their family, their children. And there's just this sense of dread and obligation and responsibility and the voice of shoulds, I should do this, I should be here, I should be better. It just is relentless and never ending. So start to notice where that's coming up for you and look at ways at living more in your own rhythm, in your own authenticity and with oodles of self-kindness, non-judgment to really remove a lot of that um, debilitating pressure, anxiety and um, dread that we can't do anything about if we're not aware that it's there. So that's why the Rocksteady program is a lot of bringing gentle awareness to these many, many layers um, in our life that could be driving many of our behaviours, our habits and our patterns. So unpacking all of that. So I'd really invite you to take that full Rocksteady program journey because the chances are if it hasn't magically resolved itself in six weeks, which is what we expect with sensory distortions, then it probably is a bit of a deeper um, journey of exploration. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, to learn more, visit seekingbalance.com.au. I'm Joey. And again, I think this is another conversation we actually talk about a lot within the Rocksteady program. So for those of you who have the program, Go to our call replays to the archives of our live group calls and visual vertigo, visual snow, um, visual upsets and difficulties comes up quite a lot in the community conversation. So there's a lot of tips, tricks and tools you'll hear as your peers navigate this for themselves. So it's a bye for now.